Beam down smoke. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of Investment Odyssey. I really hope that you guys are enjoying this series and once again thank you for 10,000 subscribers. I'm not going to waste too much of your time with the intro so here's our sponsor and then we're going to get straight into the episode. The sponsor for today's video is Item Herald. Item Herald is a European marketplace. It actually reminds me a lot of basically what Buff would be to the Chinese marketplace and what Float Market would be to the American marketplace. And I would say Item Herald is basically going to be the European version of that. So they are a really great third party marketplace. They have really good deals on a lot of items, all the way up to 30% off, of course, on some of their really popular items on the front page. And of course, on top of that, they have really low seller fees, down to 5% if you add Item Herald to your name. I think they're a great new marketplace. Place, and I would definitely suggest you go check them out and start selling some items on there and you can go ahead and get some pretty good deals. In terms of payment methods, they do have you covered with Stripe. It's a great payment method that you can use and it's going to be a lot better than of course D2A Pay. They do still feature D2A Pay, which is also an option. They also of course feature player to player trading, which is going to be a great option for those of you that want to not have to worry too much about the seven day trade hold and you want to get your items in a faster method. Player to player trading is also going to be updated without the use of an API key, which is pretty cool as well. If you want to check out Item Herald, be sure to use the link in the description below and thank you very much for your time. All right, guys, so here is our current spreadsheet before this episode starts. This is actually showing a $12 loss since last week, which is actually fine. I actually expected a lot of this to happen because of the normalizations that were obviously going to occur with the huge profit that we saw last week. We saw a $45 rise in profit from the last time we did this video. So a loss of $12 is actually not that bad considering how normalizations usually work. We are still up by a pretty nice differential there. As you can see, I am now tracking the differential and also each week's profit and loss total and you can go ahead and see that on the side of the actual spreadsheet itself in terms of all the investments some of the things to highlight with this spreadsheet are that we are seeing some hype losses which means that basically skins that have a lot of hype behind them skins that are being used as really common investments such as the desert eagle emerald drumming gunder are losing pretty large and this is mainly because of the normalizations hitting them harder than it would a regular other item for example the gambit hollow actually did rise quite a lot in terms of its normal value and that was probably because it wasn't such a forefront hype item item as compared to the Desert Eagle Emerald Roman Gunder. The important thing to point out here is that this is completely normal and it's something that always is going to happen in a marketplace like this. So this is just something that we have to take and move on to the next week. I think that we're going to see pretty large increases in value over the next week or so. Speaking of moving on, let's go ahead and move on to this episode of Investment Odyssey. I really hope that you guys are enjoying the series. I really am enjoying making it and it's a really fun series for me to do. All right, guys, so the first thing I decided to purchase for this episode is going to be something that I've sort of been tracking in the past and haven't really put a whole ton of forceful look into it. It's something that I think is a very interesting and sort of niche investment and something that I think will perform well going forward. Fair warning, this is a bit of a weird one. It's sort of one of those niche off-color investments, but sometimes those are really good gainers, and so let's go ahead and look at what I bought. These are Vex Gaming foils and papers. I went ahead and bought five of the foils and two of the papers. I think that's a pretty good spread for this because the foils are a lot more interesting than the papers themselves. So a bit of backstory on these. This is pretty much one of the really random teams that competed at Kludge Napoka 2015. Sorry if I mispronounced that I don't actually know the language that it comes from, so I'm really sorry if I mispronounced that. But basically, this tournament was a DreamHack tournament from 2015. It's a very old one, of course, and I think the stickers from this were not that great. They didn't have that good of designs, except for the Vex Gaming stickers, which I think really fit the star design of the sticker itself really well. Anyway, I really think these stickers are super cool. I was able to get them for decently under market, and I actually sort of pushed the market up for them on the Steam market itself, just because there were not that many listed. I think it's sort of a rare sticker, and it's something that's probably only going to see low rises or losses, so that's sort of something that's going to be a little bit slower, but still pretty cool to invest into. I currently have a goal of $15 for the foils and a goal of $5 for the papers, which I think is pretty manageable. It's not really too crazy of a goal. I think it's something that could actually happen for the sticker itself. We just have to see what happens in the future. Regardless, I think they're super cool stickers, and I would totally suggest checking them out if you guys are interested in this kind of thing. So next, before we get into the next pickup, I actually wanted to quickly look at something that has actually occurred since the previous episode of Investment Odyssey, and that is with our Katowice 2014 investment which was the Dictatos 2014 Katowice Hollow. So this is going to be a pretty interesting thing here, and I think it's going to set a good precedent for how we're going to value these items on our spreadsheet itself. So basically what happened with this thing is the Dignitas actually ended up selling for 5,500 USD, which was a bit higher than its regular price of around 4,200 to 4,400 USD. So I think that's actually a pretty large rise in price, and obviously we do actually see a rise in price in the USP itself just because of this. So at 2% sticker value, this values the sticker itself at 110 USD, which means that with the dark water added onto that, that 
brings the total value of the weapon to $137 in USD, which is a pretty large gain from our previous valuation from the previous week. However, the problem here is that we can't really update the value because we don't know if this is actually a permanent price for the Dignitas Hollow because it is, of course, only one sale. So that's sort of where we're at with that, and if you're wondering with the pricing of that, that's why. Moving on to our next pickup for this episode, guys, I actually really wanted to go pretty big on this and buy something really cool because we are going to be buying an AK-47. So AK-47s have been pretty unaffected by the metagame changes. They have not really been balanced or changed in any sort of way in a very long time now. So I think it's actually a really good time to buy an AK-47. It looks like it's in a really good spot. No one's really complaining about how strong it is. So I think it's really going to be a good item to buy. When it comes to AK-47s, there are a lot of options for investments. You can of course go with a traditional old case investment. So for example, the AK-47 Wasteland Rebel or the AK-47 Vulcan, both very good options and very old skins. Obviously those are pretty common skins and pretty popular skins. So they are going to trade pretty close to their normal price. However, they could see spikes and generalizations in price pretty much at any time. Well, I think these are both really good options and they are both skins that I considered picking up for this section of the investment portfolio. I did instead decide to go with something a little bit more off color, a little bit more off beat, which is the AK-47 Jet Set. So the Jet Set is a pink from the baggage collection. It's actually the most rare item from the baggage collection itself. Very old collection, very much so like the Glock Fade in the Assault collection, in my opinion at least. And I think it's a really cool skin. It's super unique. There's not really any other skins like this at all. It looks insanely good with stickers on it just because of the entire vibe of the skin itself. Looks really, really good with mixed stickers as well. So I think in general, just a really, really cool skin and definitely something that I wanted to pick up. Because of the nature of the jet set being so rare, I don't really think it's going to see some insane increases in prices anytime soon, but I think it's still a good time to buy it right now. And while it is still pretty expensive and has seen some rises in prices very recently as well, I think it can still go higher. And of course, because of its rarity and low quantity, I think it's a really good option. But I went ahead and picked up a minimal wear one. My goal for this is around $200 because the minimal wear one is around 180 or so and I think $200 is a feasible goal just because of the rarity of this and because of how the Glock Fade usually performs. In fact the Glock Fade was actually only around $600 or even a little bit less at the beginning of this year and is now at around $900 so an absolutely insane thing for that and I think the AK Jet Set is going to follow the same sort of pattern in terms of very large rises in a very short time. Anyway I think this is a really cool skin something that is just super unique and definitely a really interesting option for the portfolio. In general really cool option and a really cool idea and that's where we're going to do with that. In terms of it rising, I would say one important thing here is that it is going to be sort of erratic because it is going to rise in short periods of time, just like the Glock Fade usually does, so we're going to have to watch out for that. And that brings us to the final item that I'm going to be buying for Investment Odyssey for this episode, and that's going to be the Op Cortisera in factory new condition. Now the reason for this is a few. First of all, the Op Cortisera has a .06 float cap, which means getting one in a factory new condition puts you ahead of the game in terms of investing, because of course it does have a float cap, meaning the price spikes for it are going to be higher. Another really good thing about the Op Cortisera is it's a very old op, and also one that does look pretty decent. A lot of people I've actually heard are actually gaining pretty nice opinions opinions about this op. Really a good sign for the future of it. It's a very unique looking op. The only other op that has the same sort of vibe as it is going to be the op Worm God. However, the Worm God, of course, is white and has a very weird kind of off-color design that a lot of people don't really like. The Cortisera, on the other hand, while it does have sort of the same type of vibe, it is in fact green and blue, which is a very nice color combination. Anyway, because of the float cap and also the greater opinions about it, and also the fact that the op Cortisera is a very old op from a very old collection, and also a sort of rare one from that collection itself, I think the op Cortisera is going to be a decent option for some slow and safe profit. So this episode is sort of trying to buy those items that could see erratic rises, but nothing, you know, too crazy. I think this kind of investing is a really nice style. It, of course, gives you a really safe option and also gives you some stuff that could be a very good option for erratic rises when that kind of stuff happens. It's also going to be some really old items, which in general are going to have lower quantities, which kind of pushes them towards the positive price trend area. So I think these are really good options. I think the jet set's really cool. I think the Cortisera is really cool. So let's go ahead and add those to the spreadsheet. And as you can see, we now have them added up. And I think these are really going to be just super awesome options. And I think that's going to really give us a good shot for the future. So guys, that's going to cut it for this episode. I'm going to show you my storage unit here. There are a few things that are actually missing from the storage unit because those things are actually on trade hold. A little weird. Some of the items also got swapped out, but it's still the same storage unit and the same items that we had for Investment Odyssey since the beginning. So just make sure that you keep that in mind. Anyway, thank you for checking out this episode. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And I really hope that you're enjoying the Investment Odyssey series. I really enjoy making it. So I'm really glad if you enjoyed it as well. 
make sure you go ahead and check out that like button. Also check out that subscribe button because I make the best and fastest investment content anywhere else on YouTube. Also make sure you guys check out my Discord server and also make sure you check out Item Herald. All the links for that are going to be in the description below. Again, thank you guys for checking out this episode and I'll see you all next time. Peace.